Hi, I'm George Nordhaus, and welcome to another Monday morning. I've always been intrigued by this uh, subject, and I'm learning constantly. We're on YouTube all the time. I want to find somebody that had done it and knew it and really could tell us about it. So uh, we're going to talk about YouTube marketing for independent insurance agents today, and I think it's a great tool that people just aren't using. Let me tell you who's going to do it for you. Ryan Hanley is, uh, is, the, is the guy. And I want to show you what, uh, here's his contact uh, information and all that, but you'll be able to get that at the end also. But Ryan, uh, when he first started his business, he was, uh, I mean, he first started in the business, got out of school and all that, he went to Mer he was American Express, he was with an international accounting firm. Uh, he was, uh, well, I, I tell you how I met him, I, he, he and I were both writing uh, blogs for, uh, uh, for, uh, what was it? Was it a uh, lending tree? Lending right. tree. Lending tree. Yeah, that that didn't last real long, but <laughs> they paid us. It was pretty good there. What? Uh, you didn't mind taking the money, did you, Ryan? I was did not mind. No, I knew you didn't. And then he went into the business, and he's with this agency that you see there, and uh, that you'll look the Murray Group, and he'll tell you maybe uh, more about that. But he has been a producer. He was a producer then for five years, but the last year or two, he's been the uh, marketing director, and he started doing blogs and and YouTubes and, and all kinds of stuff. I don't I couldn't even list them all right now and you don't want to hear them, but you do want to know that he's I think the most prolific blogger. Now that's a big statement, the most prolific blogger and uh, and not just blogs but uh, uh, recording guy and so forth in the insurance industry. And I, and I really believe that and don't think anybody's close. So uh, having said that, Ryan, what are we going to talk about today? Well, George, thank you so much for having me, uh, and that was a fantastic introduction. I'm very flattered, and if this was a video call, you'd see my face would be red from all the nice things that you said about me. But um, you know, today we're going to talk about uh, YouTube marketing and what YouTube can do for independent insurance agencies. So as you said, uh, I have created over the course of my career an incredible amount of content, and YouTube has been a very large piece of that. We're going to get into why exactly I think uh, YouTube marketing is important. We're going to talk about how it works. But first, I want to kind of build up to why creating content around your insurance agency is actually important. Um, and it comes down, it, you know, it all starts with the fact that we are no longer the gatekeepers of our insurance expertise. And let me, let me describe that a little bit. Uh, I am a a certified insurance counselor, a CIC. Many of you listening probably are. Uh, it's a designation. Comes with five courses, an incredible, uh, an incredible amount of information that you need to retain, and then through a course, uh, give back uh, through a test. And for a long time. Uh, our value to insurance consumers was our ability to retain this specific information about insurance policy forms and how insurance works and we were the gatekeepers to that information so people needed that information in order to procure uh, different insurance policies and, and that was our value. We know about the policies. Well, because of the internet, because of Web 2.0 technology, uh, all the information that I learned over these five courses uh, through the CIC program uh, can be found online, right? And, and not just the CIC. Anything that you want to know about insurance, all the way down to the most minute, boring detail, can be found online. And our consumers, whether you believe this or not, are going online and figuring out that information. They no longer want our information. They want to know how to make the right decisions with that information. And creating content and telling our stories and giving examples and, and highlighting our customers and our community is a fantastic way to become more than gatekeepers of insurance information to become actual consultants and advisors. Let me just so, tell you, let me just tell you, interrupt you one thing. The point yep. you just made right there is, I think, the most important point of the McKinsey report. It's the most important point of all of these uh, people who are, who I'm, uh, you know, working with each week. Every person is saying the exact same thing about the gatekeeper thing. I just never thought of it quite that way, and I like that. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, absolutely. So, you know, in, in how I how I figured this out was, um, you know, it, just by sitting with consumers. So, so uh, as as you mentioned, George, uh, I started in this business like so many people. I, I I married into it, right? My wife's father owns an agency. Her entire family works there. And when we moved back from being out of town back to Albany, which is our home, both of our hometowns, Albany, New York. 
uh, it just made sense that I came and worked for the agency. So I was a ground and pound, cold call, you know, rubber sole shoes, walk the streets, insurance producer for five years, and it was through those those you know the, those five years and just I, I want to say luck, but just I was working in a time where I came in right at the tail end of of technology not really being so available. And, and over the course of those five years watching it, you know, we've seen an incredible transition in the way that information is delivered, high speed internet, high speed Wi-Fi, people can get, can look at, read in a uh, very, um, very comfortable format, very quick format, they can read detailed web pages on their cell phone today. That's incredibly powerful. So. Uh, so where I'm going with this is that I was able to see this shift because I, I wasn't in the business for 30 years, right? So I got right in at the tail end of when you still had to do all these traditional methods because it was the only way to do business and I watched this transition firsthand. And it was through that time that I saw uh, consumers start to change. Right now, if I had been in the third in the business for three years, I may not necessarily have seen that because I would have been so used to the way business has always been done. But because of my unique situation, I was able to kind of see the one side and watch a transition to where people are walking into my office with you know already having information and not wanting me to regurgitate policy form information to them, but wanting to know how to actually apply that information. So, getting back to where we are at, um, YouTube videos. The reason that we use YouTube is because YouTube is owned by Google. Google is the number one search engine in the entire world, and at its purest form, down to its core mission principle, is to connect people with problems to people with solutions. Right. So the reason we use YouTube is YouTube provides us with a easy to produce, easy to publish format where we can quickly and concisely provide solutions to common problems that insurance consumers have so that they show up in this screen that we're looking at right here. Okay. And in our study done in 2012, so about a year old, the average insurance consumer, this includes business to business and uh, uh, business to consumer, so B2C and B2B, needs 11.7 pieces of information before they are willing to make a buying decision on their insurance. That's an incredibly important point, right? And this speaks to why we are creating content in the first place. Uh, the consumers of our products are researching us whether we realize it or not, okay? So even though you may say, oh, geez, you know, my people like to come in and talk to me face to face, well, there's a very good chance that they're looking at they're looking online to see what you're all about they're, they're checking out your LinkedIn profile they're checking out whether you're on Facebook and YouTube and all these places so the more content that you have online the more quickly more quickly the quicker you can get to <laughs> your 11.7 .7 pieces of information all right and and then before we get into the actual tactics here this is kind of the last slide um, where we're doing some of this theoretical stuff but basically each piece of content that we create has a different value in how much attention it receives. Okay? So what this chart is saying is in the top left, you have the easiest piece of information to create, the easiest piece of content, which also receives the least amount of attention. So think of a Facebook post. You post something inside of Facebook, a picture or a, you know, a funny phrase or something about your business, doesn't matter. How, how much, think about how much time you spend on Facebook updates, maybe three to five seconds, and then you move on to the next one, and you've probably forgotten what you just read, okay? Facebook post, incredibly easy to create, gets almost no attention, right? So as you move down this chart down and to the right, you're getting more attention, more difficult to create. Um, as you'll see, towards the bottom and then one, all the way on the bottom and one over, a video gets an incredible amount of attention, but it's only kind of at the beginning of how hard it is to create. And every single day, more and more technology is coming out, which allows, which uh, makes video easier and easier to produce. And as I'll talk about in my specific example, uh, you'll see just how easy it is to create uh, kind of a video content campaign and distribute that to people. So. Um, you can refer back to this chart. Uh, I actually got this from a popular content marketing site called Copyblogger, um, but uh, 
when you're thinking about what types of content you want to create, make sure that you understand how much attention those pieces of content are actually going to receive. Because if you spend all your time in social media, you might have to do 1,500 Facebook posts to get the amount of attention that one video gets. Wow. Think about that for a second. That's amazing. You know, yep. time spent eyes on content, thinking about what you're actually saying, you may have to produce a thousand to fifteen hundred Facebook posts to equal one three to four minute video. Wow. So where should your time be spent? Okay. Yeah. So, we, so refer back to that later uh, everyone um, when you kind of watch this for the third and fourth time. As you should be doing. With all of <laughs> Good. I, I like your attitude. <laughs> Okay, so let's talk about what I actually did inside of my website that made me such a believer in YouTube. Uh, I don't know how many people ever saw the movie Pulp Fiction. Well, in Pulp Fiction, um, Uma Thurman's character ODs on heroin, and John Travolta's character takes what you see in here, a needle full of adrenaline, and stabs it into her heart and brings her back to life. Well, my website, before we started creating content, uh, was, was dying. Right? We got 72 hits a week. They either went to our contact form or our home page because that's where our phone number and our address was. It was a flat site that did not have, um, that did not have a, lot of, um, a, a lot of articles, there wasn't a lot of content, there wasn't a lot of information on it. But, uh, so in December of 2012, I got permission uh, from my uh, father-in-law that I could start blogging on the site. I, I, had, I had been doing this on my own site for a while, was starting to produce revenue in it, um, and said, we really need to bring what I'm doing to the agency site. And in December of 2012, we did. So what I did was I asked our audience, uh, Facebook community, we sent out emails, I asked people who walked into the office, if you could have one insurance question answered, what would that question be? Just one. doesn't have to be anything crazy, just simple is perfectly fine. And over the course of the month, I gathered 147 questions. I pared those 147 questions down because there's some duplicates and things that were kind of outlandish, um, pared them down to 100 questions. And over the course of the next 100 days, I answered each question in two minutes or less in a YouTube video that I then embedded on our website and created a blog post around and then shared on all our social media platforms and then occasionally I would send out an email newsletter around a specific video that I thought um, kind of had some legs you know to kind of accelerate the sharing. Man oh man I'm telling you you got energy that is amazing 100, <laughs> 100 days in a row. 100, 100 days in a row. Wow. Simple stuff. Yeah. I mean, look at this. This is, I mean, this is two years ago. Uh, I did all this with my cell phone camera, or the first, like, f I guess 40 of them were done with my cell phone camera, and then after that, I actually bought a nicer camera because I started to see traction, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, very simple. This is me uh, at, this is probably 7.30, 8 o'clock at night, um, uh, just talking into the camera, talking ahead video goofy looking picture, you know, simple text with our <laughs> phone number, right? But look at the question, what is New York State short-term disability? This is the number one, the number one article on our website that gets us new commercial business. Wow, that's amazing. I, I think that needs to be really remembered by people. Look at that. And you get, back then, you had, whenever you made this slide, you still had about 800, 759 views. That's a lot. So, why New York State short-term disability? Like, why is it that that term brings in more? Because because people would think, oh, geez, I should be talking about you know general liability or you know I should be talking about all these different things. Why is it New York State short-term disability? Probably the policy that people like writing the least because you make almost it's almost you make almost no money on it. I mean, you would have to have a million employees to make any money on a short-term disability policy. The reason being is that because and I call this writing on the edge, right? We want to write on, we want to write about edge content because on the edge, your competition is much, much less. Mm -hmm. No one writes about New York City short-term disability. It's a very simple policy to explain, and you make almost no money on it, so no one goes after it. <laughs> but if you have short-term disability, or if you need short-term disability, right? What else do you need? If you need short-term disability, that means you have employees, so you need workers' comp. If you have workers' comp, that means that you actually have a business and need 
general liability, you need property, you may need professional lines, you may need you know all these other things. You can cross sell the personal lines of the business owners. I mean, there's all these other products that come into play because I backdoored into it going after some edge content on short term disability. So as you can see from this chart, this is gonna this actually gives these are our actual stats kind of playing out this this uh, scenario here. And when you see all the way on the left in February of 2011, we created the website. But like I said, we didn't do anything on it. It was a flat website. There was like five or six pages. We weren't blogging at all. Little bump in traffic uh, when we first you know launched it and, and sent out a couple emails. But then. After that, you just see this flat line, 72 people a week, just coming, you know, for, for a long time. No one goes to your website who doesn't already know you if you're not producing fresh content. Good point. That is, I, that is the major point of the whole day, isn't it? I think. Yeah. No one goes to, I'll say that one more time. Yeah, please. No one goes to your website if they don't already know you. If you're not producing fresh content, there's no reason for them to go. Right. Google isn't going to send people to you because you're not providing solutions for them. Google is only going to send people to your website if you are a solution provider. Now that wasn't the case five, six, seven years ago. You could just stuff your website with tons of keywords and Google was still working out their algorithm. So you know, you know, that was when the SEO business was, was booming because if you could stuff your website properly, Google would send you people and you didn't need to blog. Mm -hmm. The day has come and gone. Penguin, Panda, Caffeine, Hummingbird, all these crazy named updates to Google have all been in, um, have all been geared towards uh, um, rewarding people who are providing solutions to problems. Mm -hmm. That's what all these updates are. It, they are not, they are actually helping smaller businesses. Our traffic, like when, when Hummingbird, this recent update came out, which most of the people listening to this may not have any clue what this update is. Basically, Google just came out with a new update. What that update did was take and uh, look even farther into your content and reward smaller businesses who are addressing specific problems, small towns, uh, issues and community related things that are specific to small geographical areas reward them even more. So Google is trying with every update to make to, to uh, push the system back to the local solution providers which is just making all of us um, a lot more effective, our content marketing a lot more effective. So okay so you see the flat line and then all of a sudden you see my big red arrows about the SEO experiment. So the first arrow on the left is day one Day one, January 2nd of 2012, I produced my first video of the 100 videos in 100 days. And then you can just see what happens after that. Mm -hmm. Because I am consistently <coughs> producing solutions to problems and Google is loving it. And just sending as many people as they can our way. So uh, what's cool about, about producing content, and I use the word cool because that's the vernacular of my generation, so I apologize if anyone um, is offended by the word cool, but <laughs> what happens here is that when you stop, so, so you produce content, right? Let me, let me spin back here for a second. Um, when you're a producer, what are, what are the, at well, 5, 6 o'clock maybe, maybe earlier than that, 4 o'clock, you got to go home and eat, right? You want to see your family, you want to watch your TV shows or read your books or take your dog for a walk, whatever you do, you stop working. The articles on your website never stop working for you, ever. Once they're indexed by Google, once Google understands what problem that article solves, it just continues to send people there. The number one time slot for new inbound leads to our website is from 6.30 to, to 9.30 at night. Good point. Never heard of that. 6.30 to 9.30. That's when wow. we get the most inbound leads to our website. And the reason being is because people are working all day. They get home, they eat dinner. They complain to their spouse about whatever the issue is that's bothering <laughs> them. And the spouse says, whether it's the, the man, the woman, or whatever, whatever, says, time to go figure that out. And you pop open your Google machine and you type in your problem and Google spits out a solution. And if it's, if it's insurance and you're in the Albany area, it's most likely going to spit out something from my website. So, and, and at that time, they don't, they don't necessarily expect a call at that time, but they want you to get a hold of them. So they fill out our little contact form, boom, enter. The next day they get a phone call from us and now we're in business, right? So it, the traffic never stops coming. 
it's 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 amazing. I, I could go on all day about this. And this is just another slide which which shows you how uh, YouTube uh, or how how the the traffic just continues to increase as you continue to add content. Now you don't need to continue. You know, so I did the 100 questions in 100 days because I wanted to do the adrenaline shot to the heart. I wanted to jumpstart things. I do not produce content every day anymore. Not even close. I might do one or two posts a week, maybe one post a week. I may skip a week because I've put in the work to get my to get my website working. Now um, I can be very strategic about when and where I produce content and what I'm talking about. If you're not there yet, then there may be some front loading. But once you get the machine rolling and Google knows to keep coming back to your site, you can kind of tone back that content a little bit. Um, and what's it, so? Let's talk about why YouTube is so valuable. And I know we're. <clears throat> I've been talking for a long time here, so I want. Well, to, well, how much time amazing. do we have, George? No, oh, that's right. Just, just to think, do what do what you're doing because you. This is vital for people in the future. Thirty-seven thousand people had visited it in July of of uh, last year. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> that's more than I've had, I think, all told in all these years. Wow. <laughs> so, and and it's just by we're just answering questions, okay? Uh -huh. So, let's talk about uh, real quick. Let's talk about real quick. Um, why YouTube works versus other video providers. Okay, so mm -hmm. I talk about YouTube because uh, I think YouTube is an incredibly easy way for people to create content. Right, we don't have to be writers, we don't have to be copywriters, we don't have to know where commas go and when we should use a colon versus semicolon. We don't need to know any of that. We pop open our camera. Most of our cameras now, 57% of the population has a HD video camera in their pocket. Right, so you pop open that video camera and you talk into it. Maybe have someone hold it for you, do whatever you got to do. Just start talking into the camera. Answer a question. So here is the homework that I'm going to give everybody who's <laughs> listening to this. Today, either pull out your video camera in your pocket or find someone in your office that has a, a cell phone camera that, ha that takes video. If it's, if it's a camera that's been made in the last three years, it has an HD camera. So you're perfectly fine. Yeah. Um, pop that thing open and answer a simple question about your business. Answer the next question that you get. Just write down the next question. It could be the simplest thing in the entire world, like do insurance companies take credit cards? What is, you know, yeah. what, what's the comp limit? What, you know, what is comprehensive coverage? It doesn't matter what the question is. Pop it open, answer that question in two minutes or less. If you can do it in 45 seconds, perfect, perfect, right? Keep the videos short. You can. You can go deep on occasion, but for the most part, two minutes or less, and sh and try to have over thirty seconds, but somewhere in between thirty seconds and two minutes. No, I saw you I, that uh, other one. Your disability one was uh, was uh, a minute thirty two seconds. And I thought, yes. wow, that's a short. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, because people don't when when we're talking about insurance content. So we're not like enter we're not entertainers, right? Like this isn't TMZ. We're not talking about celebrity gossip or mm -hmm. or you know the size of someone's rear end, right? I mean, it's not like, it's not, this is an incredibly interesting thing. It's people want to watch these videos because they want the answer to whatever the question is. Mm -hmm. So next question you get, pop open your, your camera, talk the solution into the camera from that phone, from that phone, whether it's Android, whether it's the Samsung, whether it's an iPhone, you can upload directly to YouTube, directly to YouTube. So if you don't have a YouTube account before you do this, sign up for a YouTube account. It's like signing up for anything. It's just like your name and your email address and you have a YouTube account. Okay? From your phone, you can upload that video directly to YouTube. So you've asked, answered a question. You now have that question in video. You upload the, the, by a button click. This isn't, you know, it's not rocket science. Button click from your phone, upload to YouTube. You now have a YouTube video. <laughs> you are a video producer. If you have, a, if you're, if you can put that on your website, do it. If you can't, then just s tell your web designer that you need them to do that. And if they charge you more than ten dollars, find a new web designer. <laughs> Good. And because it's a simple piece of code that they're going to add to your website, and boom, you now have a YouTube video which answers a very specific question, provides a very sp specific solution in your words with your face, and and now that's on your website, and Google's going to start indexing it and sending people your way. Good. It is literally that simple. Good. And some additional benefits you get by using YouTube are uh, inside a search. If you have a video, 
embedded on your website um, from YouTube. See that little box next to the search results? You see what mm -hmm. is New York State short-term disability and then a little box? 47% mm -hmm. higher click-through rate if that box is there versus if it's not. I'll be darned. 47 percent wow so that's so that's pretty cool it and is then cool. also <laughs> under the other the next one down uh, these are called uh, these additions are called rich snippets and uh, underneath there you see um, Google, uh, Google also adds in your last two YouTube videos to your channels page so wow. uh, so you know these additional kind of benefits help with click-through rate versus using a Vimeo or something like that where you're not necessarily going to get um, these rich snippets. Um, Google is obviously going to play favorites over a video that's posted in YouTube than a video that's posted in Vimeo because it's not their platform and it's, there is a um, you know people will tell you that Vimeo is for professionals and it's a complete crock. Um, there's nothing unprofessional about YouTube. YouTube has HD. There's more integrate integration features and you know if we wanted to really go down the rabbit hole um, there is all kinds of really really cool stuff that you can do with YouTube but in a basic sense it's an easy quick way to provide solutions to problems that you can get onto your website and and Google loves it. There's no charge on it is there? Completely free. Well, nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so I just blew through a lot of a lot of information. Um, a lot of information, and that's basically kind of where I get to the end of my my twenty minute. Why every insurance agency should be doing something with YouTube, specifically answering questions. I think it was a wonderful presentation, and I'm just uh, so happy to have you do this. I didn't know a lot of these things. You know, we have some IT people. I do the thing and I give it to them, and all. I didn't realize it was that easy to do. Why? I wonder why more agents don't do it. Don't you? I think I think a lot of people are worried about what they're going to look like on camera, mm -hmm. and I will tell you that. You know, I, I wouldn't dress like a bum, but you know, you have a you can have a polo shirt on or a sweater or a blouse. You know, just something reasonably nice, mm -hmm. and you just do a shoulders up shot, and don't worry about ums and ahs. I mean, if you're saying um every other word, then maybe you want to practice a little bit, but uh, just talk naturally. You know, what I do when I do when I'm doing a video is I just picture the person I'm talking to. So, like my mom. Mm -hmm. Love her to death. Knows nothing about insurance. Like zero, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so when I do a video, I talk to the camera, and I just picture the camera as my mother, and I just talk to her like you know. So I'm not using big words. I'm using words that I you know big insurance terms that I know she won't understand because she is most insurance consumers. Now, if you are a B two B and you're a going after uh, maybe a more sophisticated audience, yeah. so say. Um, I don't know, maybe professionals who've dealt with professional liability for a long time maybe have the ins and outs of professional liability. Then maybe you want to practice a little bit and, and, and be a little more professional. But people, do, people don't want a corporate buttoned up video. They want you in the way that you are because when that person sits down across the table from you to do business, they're going to expect you to be the exact same way you are in that video. Very so good. if you try to be very buttoned up and calculated and use big specific words and you talk very slow like a machine, that is exactly what people are going to expect when they sit down across from you at the table and when you don't talk that way, they're going to be, feel weird. They're going to feel like some there's a disconnect there. But if you're very casual and national, uh, and natural, you don't have to be using slang or, or being unprofessional, just just a relaxed, professional, kind of casual conversation. And if that's the type of person you are, then that's the way you want to come through in the video. And I got you. Sort of the, so that's, <laughs> that would be my advice there. Well, listen, let me ask this. How many videos do you have on your website? We have 150-something. Oh, my gosh. -something. That's more we have at agencies online. I think we have just over 100 on them. Of course, they're not personalized like this. But, I mean, but uh, that's a lot. Whoa, a lot, I well, guess. We, huh? we geek out on this stuff pretty hard. So I actually, we had so much success with this, doing yeah. it the handheld way, mm -hmm. that I actually convinced my father-in-law to have us build uh, an entire studio down in, our, in the basement of our agency. So now I can do, like, real professional-looking uh, it's kind of white screen infinity video, so we've taken it to a whole nother level now, but um, you know, at the time, what really our success was born out of was very raw, honest kind of video. 
I think you've taken communications to the next level. I, I really do. I think you're forcing all of us. Let's see how we can touch base with you uh, here. Uh, let me get the slide here. That there, there's information all about it. You can find him all those different ways, and you and you should look at these. Anybody, everybody should look at it, and and pass it around to people in your agency because a lot of them, uh, a lot of them may want to do the. Uh, the answering to you know uh, CSR for example whatever oh, I mean yeah. so many possibilities uh, I Ryan thank you and for just being you and and, and I uh, I constantly read your stuff I'm learning from you on a daily basis I learned a lot today that I'm going to tell my people to do uh, <clears throat> that's but but nonetheless I learned it so listen uh, folks before we leave don't forget to go back to the uh, email you got you can get a, a, a the archive there. Uh, just click on the archive. That's a YouTube archive. Or click on Rough Notes. You'll see the uh, the link there, and uh, and go in the archive, and you'll see all of these. So send that to uh, people in your agency, or other people, or friends, or whatever. And in the meantime, uh, don't forget the ICC Community Flash uh, Community Quiz Flash, and the ENO uh, Tip of the Week. So once again, Ryan, thank you, my friend. You did a wonderful job, as expected. Very much my pleasure, George. Thanks for having me.